Hello everybody, this is Budrich. Let's change wallpapers. We got our Sublime Editor with the BWP script open here. Um, so to change a wallpaper, we need to use some external program. And the one I will use here in this video uh, will be Fe. It's a quite common program. You may or may not have it installed. If you don't have it installed, search for it in your package manager and you will probably find it in the official repositories because it's a very common uh, program. It's actually an image viewer. You can use it to just view images, but you can also use it to, to uh, set the wallpaper. Um, let's do this because I know the options are so uh, verbose here, but if you run fe with dash dash help, you will get a little synopsis on how to use this. A lot of it is about the image viewer itself, uh, but the wallpaper options all start like this, hyphen hyphen bg hyphen and then uh, the way you want to set the wallpaper. If you want a centered wallpaper, fill, max, scale, tile, and then it's also this is related, no fe bg, which I will copy because I always forget it here. So now we know the, the commands. and. Since our wallpapers all have the, the, the same resolution as our uh, screen, um, the, the different wallpaper options will not uh, make any difference. But if, if you have like a, yeah, you, you, you know what max and center a wallpaper means, I, I assume. So if we want to change wallpaper, we use fe, bg, and then fill or something or center or whatever. Uh, and then the path to an image, um, TMP, BWP, walls, and let's take cheese balls. And there, it changed wallpaper. And it's pretty fast and efficient. Uh, it differs a bit depending on the image format and the image size. Cheese balls here is a quite small image. We try it with, uh, let's see if we can find a larger one. Abstract baby blue. Probably take a little longer. Ah, quite fast there, there also. It, it, it's a very efficient program to set the wallpapers with. So we will use that. And this no, uh, no fair BG option that is, every time you set the wallpaper with fe, it also creates a file in your home directory called uh, fe or dot fe bg, which is a, a simple little shell script that contains the, the last command. So you can just execute this script to, to get the, the same wallpaper as you set the last time. So it's a good thing to add to your uh, init script or whatever. But we will make our own version of this, so we don't need this FebBG. And then you can, um, can add that option as well. No FebBG. And now it changed wallpaper, but it doesn't uh, update this file. So we can actually remove this file and then it will not get created and our home directory will stay a little bit cleaner. Let's copy this command here, um, paste it here or something for reference. Okay, this is what we have now in our script here. We test if we pass the, the A option. If, if we do, we add something to the library and then we don't want to do anything else. And first I thought we, we keep it like this with this if else, but when I think about it, it it's not it's better to do this. It, it will just look nicer. If we, instead of, of creating this if-else, we create a block here, add to library, and then just exit the script after we have added something to the library, so it will never continue. And that means we, we don't need to indent everything here af uh, afterwards, which can be nice because this main function will probably become quite large, or we'll see. But we need to set uh, whatever option, uh, except the A option, we, we will need this wall uh, variable set to something. And we, we did this in, in a previous video, get wall. 
uh, depending on, on how the arguments look and which option we have chosen, it will uh, choose a different uh, target wall. And it will only contain the name, so wall here will, o will only be like a word, cheese balls, it will not be the full path. So now we can test here if uh, the option W is set to 1. If it is, then we, we change wallpaper. And I, I do a new if statement here, we can change it later if we want to. And if that is true, then we can change wallpaper here with our command phi. Uh, but we of course need to change this to the wall we want to change to. And here we also have to prefix it with, with the directory. And we store that also in this global variable wd here. So wd slash w or wall w all and I think this will work now we should be able to do bwp uh, wallpaper random and it sets a random wall for us and you can see the execution time is, is pretty good it's almost the same as the fact command itself so that means our script is, is uh, uh, pretty uh, efficient but sometimes, if you pay no, uh, attention here, yeah, now it happened. Nothing happens when we execute the command. And that is because we, we set it to a random wall here. Um, and the random wall is uh, completely random here from this directory. And it could happen that it uh, picks the same wall as we already had. So we need to add some, some stuff here so, so things like that doesn't happen. So instead of just uh, writing the command here, we, we execute a, a new function set wall and we pass it the name of the wall here and we can copy this uh, and then we create that function in the lib directory or we create a file we name it the same as the function we can write the shebangs we get the correct syntax highlighting then we write the name of the function here, or we declare the function. And here we can set the, the wall. And we can use the same command here, since these variables are global, they will be known here. We will not do it in this, this way, but this, this actually works. Um, and as you can see, now it, it works even, uh, from this function. And this is the nice thing, you know, with this lib, lib uh, setup here. I just created this file saved, I don't have to do anything, it works uh, right, right away. Um, but we actually passed the wall uh, variable. In one way we, we kind of don't need it, we could use the global uh, version, but I, I, I just like to, to do it this way. Create some variables here, you can call one name, one trg to start with at least, and name is equal to $1, which will be wall here. So we can change this now to name instead. Um, and trg is this. So we set this to trg. That might seem a, a bit unnecessary to just do the, add four lines to do the same thing, but um, I think it makes sense because we will need the name and stuff here. But here we can also see Shellcheck now complains about this WD variable uh, that it's not assigned because it don't know that this is a global variable set in the main function and stuff here. Um, one uh, thing you can do if, if you're using Shellcheck and want to get rid of that uh, warning, you can set a, a default value here to this variable to nothing. And that is kind of good practice to do anyways, uh, and we get rid of the warning and everything works fine. Because if, if, if this variable have a value, then it will set it. And our get wall function here, it should always return a, a, a valid wall, so we don't really need to test if this file exists and stuff here. This is fine. But how do we... Uh, make sure that it doesn't set the, the same wallpaper two times. 
I like to do this uh, and we, we can use that for many other things. Uh, we can use it for example as our own FebBG thing here. If we create a symbolic link uh, of the wallpaper in uh, BWP dir slash current wall and I use FS here, S for symbolic link and F to replace any uh, existing links with the same name. Now you can see it creates that zoom link here and updates it. And you see Thunar, uh, the file manager, uh, bloat, bloatware. Really nice when you do things like this. If you don't even see your wallpaper, you can still see that it works, kind of, you know. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but this doesn't solve the, the random um, issue. So let's see if we can modify our random wall function a bit here. This is how it looks like right now. Um, and I guess, um, yeah, the easy thing to do here is to store the output of this command, which will give, give us a random wallpaper. Uh, and compare uh, that name with the name of, of uh, where, where this zoom link points to. So, and this zoom link is something we can use in different places in, in the script here. Uh, so, so I think it also makes sense to create a, a, some, some uh, 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 variables out of that. Here it's very important that you create these variables before we, we call get wall here because get wall may uh, execute for example a random wall and if we want to use this yeah you, you'll see what I mean getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's create a, a, a variable that we can call cur puff for current, current wallpaper path. And that is read link bwp dir slash current wall. Uh, forgot a quote there, like this. And then we create another one that we call kurnam, which is the name of the current wall. Uh, we can write that like this trim the, the directory from curpath here um, by doing this remove everything up until the last slash so now curnum here will be a global variable that is available for us now in for example uh, get random and here you can see now we execute get wall. We have the random option. Get wall here. Oh, you want a random wall? Okay, I can give you a random wall. Uh, here, random option. Get random wall. Yes, execute get random wall. And here we want to use this kurnam variable. So it's important that we set it before uh, uh, we set the wall variable here. So let's create a, a local variable here first that we can call rind for random and that is equal to the output of this uh, and then we want to make some sort of test here to see if random is equal to kurnam and here we probably complain again no it now it doesn't complain because now shell check isn't active because I don't have a shebang here so now it's a, a, a unix generic POSIX uh, here and then shell check is not active and I kind of want shell check even if it uh, can be annoying um, so that's why I save here and now we get this uh, now we get a red warning here because we have forgot to, to quote the variable also. And shell check, it works for, with other editors as well. It works with Vim also and stuff. So highly recommend you using it. It's a good way to just learn uh, scripting by 
<laughs> by scripting. Here it also warns me uh, this is not the, the recommended way to doing this, but whatever. So how should we do this here? Uh, I think this is the best way. We create a, a while loop here and we while forever. While colon and colon you can think of as th true. So while something, while true, which means while forever, it will take a random, get a random image here with this command. And then we see, uh, is this random image equal to, uh, to the current uh, wallpaper? Then we want to keep on looping. But if it's not true, or break, and that will break the, uh, the eternal uh, loop. We also need a do. So when we are done looping here, mo like nine, most times it will, will, will only do this once. It, it's not uh, often that you get the same result, but it, it could happen and it's kind of annoying when it does. But now we just echo random here. Um, and then we will always get a random wallpaper. It's kind of difficult to, to see that it works, but it, we will never get the same wall now. But sometimes the, you, you can see that the execution time might spike up a little bit. And that is probably because, like there for example, uh, we probably executed the loop uh, more than one time there. And then it of course adds to, to the execution times so a couple of milliseconds. Okay, great. Um, another thing I like uh, to add uh, that we will use here in in our script is this history. So we can go back and not just use random, also go back and forward in, in the history of, of, of wallpapers we have set. So let's go back to set wall here. Um, and the, the simplest and easiest uh, way to add a history file would be to just echo name append that to a file that we could call bwp dir slash history. Now if we execute this with a random wall, change wallpaper, it also created the file because it didn't exist. We open this one, you can see it contains cheese balls here. We execute the command again. It adds that to the file and so on. Let's do this a couple of times. We got a file to work with. I hope you're not uh, getting some kind of seizures of the flashing screen. Um, okay, but uh, I have found that that it's easiest to work with this uh, uh, history file if it is. Um, for one, uh, it should be reversed. Right now it says Win95. That is the current wallpaper. We can see that with this beautiful logotype here. When graphic design mattered, I remember. Um, or this is not original Windows 95 wallpaper, well, wh whatever. Mm. I would like the current, the latest wallpaper to be at the top and the, the first to be at the bottom. So, so the opposite order. I also uh, wa want to remove all um, uh, duplicates. I don't know if we, yeah, we have Firewatch here at least. I can see we have uh, two places. So we need to add some, some uh, logic to this. Uh, set wall. So we create yet another function here. Uh, that we call add to history and then we pass name to that function can cut this guy here create that file add to history dot sh create a shebang and declare the function There, name, uh, now we really need to set this variable first and foremost here. So local name, name is equal to dollar one. So this should work now, just the same. Set some random, set some random, set some random. 
and we can see white mountains it looks uh, like it's working so how do we do the, do this now uh, reverse the order of this adding the wallpaper to the top instead of the bottom and removing all uh, duplicates I would like to show you now uh, a really cool uh, orc uh, hack here it's it's extremely weird uh, cat I don't think I have shown you this in, in maybe I have before but here I just uh, catted this file you know it looks like this like this instead pipe this to orc and then we write this exclamation mark a dollar zero plus plus history there now we get the output with all duplicates removed yes it's hard to to see exactly that that worked but it trust me it did and this is the best way to do this uh, I have found um, to remove duplicates from, from a, a, a list like this because there is also sort which is a command you know and then you can pass the u option for unique it will also remove all duplicates and then we pass history here that also removes all duplicates but it also sorts uh, the list for us how nice of you sort which means that it uh, completely breaks the order because this this list it's important to keep the same orders we have a history file if it sorts it alphabetical then it makes no sense at all to go back and forward in this list but with this all command then it just removes the duplicates uh, without changing the order and that is exactly what we want here and yeah let's add this to our uh, script and then I can explain how it works because it <laughs> I know it looks extremely weird uh, add to history and we will also not only add to do this we also add the first file and, and stuff and uh, yeah you will see here but let's let's first try to figure out how this command works Um, exclamation mark most of the time especially when it's written like this first uh, before any commands and functions and stuff it's the same in bash you know you can negate the test with with exclamation mark um, oh, I cannot find any here if we would do this that would mean yeah it would would kind of reverse this you know it means the opposite and it's it's the same thing here um, if this but here it's not really a test it's a it's an array here the element of, of the array a uh, is uh, the same name as the current line or the current record dollar zero uh, and then it increments that element if that is not true the opposite of that or what this does is if this element uh, doesn't exist it will create it but if it already exists then this will be false and then it will not do anything but if it doesn't exist it will create it and then it will also do the default action which is print so these two are the same I don't know if I make, made any sense but that's that's how it works um, but we also now want to add our name here to the top so we pass that uh, to awk by declaring an, a variable in awk that we can give the same name as the original variable that was also called name just to make it more confusing there and then we create a begin block here meaning this part of, of this awk script will be executed before it starts processing this file uh, and what we do here is uh, we add uh, an element to this array with a with name variable to make sure that that is uh, tested and then we can just set it to 1 and it will work and we also print name 
there and let's see set wall add to history so now if we try to change wallpaper it should work uh, and it should change wallpaper but now it will uh, execute this uh, uh, add to history function that will just print this out it will not change any files or anything here and there we can see pineapple bench uh, that's that uh, looks like a correct name for this wall right because it's a pineapple on a bench good um, and that is printed at the top of the list there are no uh, no duplicate lines can keep on doing this cheese balls we all know that this is the cheese balls by now and it keeps on but of course now now since we don't add the new uh, new uh, images to the history it's not perfect and um, I think I showed you that a, a long time ago that you can use this uh, I and then include uh, in place which will kind of simulate this uh, the I option of said but I kind of um, I cannot really recommend this because there are some weird uh, issues with, with using this uh, one is that if you print something in the begin block or in the end block of uh, of of your org script that will not get included uh, in when when you do this in place so if we if we would do this it would change the history file it would remove all uh, duplicates but it this part will never get included and it's more even more common that you do print stuff in the end block I, I often do that and then it will not work with this in place thing so instead we just pipe this output or re redirect it to uh, a temporary file in, in our T TMP directory you can call it BWP hist or something and then just move uh, with the F option, so it will replace uh, the old uh, history file with this P hist BWP dir slash history. When I think about it, also this we should keep this in a in a variable. Let's do that here. Call it history. History mm. use that here as well. This and then we can add this as a global variable because we will use it anytime we use the the, the history. Yes, and when we are going back and forward, that will be different op uh, functions so so it's this makes sense to keep as a global as well we could keep it maybe here maybe we should add all globals at the same place in no let's not but we can keep this path variable here at least okay um, so now it should work here if we do random 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 now if I open that history file uh, we should have some cat table cat is the first and before table cat it was pineapple beach take a random again now table cat should be the second in this list and it is and waiver so now we have our uh, now our history file is kind of working uh, and I think uh, we make a break there and the next video we add uh, uh, navigating that history file so we can all we don't have to use this random option we can also go back and forward in with uh, with with this command right so yeah we covered some things here oh one minute one minute we can do it we, we can do it I would like to add another environment variable Let's call it BWP command and set that to the command we use to, to change wallpaper. Fe, uh, no, fe, b, g, and b, g, fill. Um, save this, set wall. Then instead of using this, we use our 
also important here don't quote this bwp command save just test that it works and it works and then i guess it makes also sense to to see if this command um, actually is installed if uh, it's installed so we can do this command v and then bwp command and i like to trim this um, so we only have the word fe and no command line options i don't think you need to do that but i kind of want to do that anyways uh, and if this pipe this to dev null also so we don't get the command name output then if this is false we can print an error message and say uh, bwp command bwp command not found and erx that will print the error message and exit the script so this should uh, yeah, just make it a little bit more secure and, if, and you will see if or the user who uses this can see that it doesn't have fe installed and that this uh, environment variable is not set. Could try to, to just, just to test this, we could set that environment variable to something silly like uh, fella kuti or fella kuti is not a silly, it, it's a great African uh, uh, musician from the 70s and if I'm not mistaken I think uh, Ginger Baker the drummer of Qu Cream uh, lived in Africa for a while and, and he hung out a lot with Fela Kuti and I, I know they recorded a really good uh, record that I haven't listened to in many many years and that's something I think I will do right now um, yeah, and of course, then you could use a, a different command also if we wanted to do that. I know uh, I have been using hsetroot for a long time. It works just as well. It's a little bit slower, but it's it's fine. Uh, and then you do, do like something like center, I think. So now if we execute this, it will change wallpaper, but now it used a different command. You can see it's a, a little bit higher execution time with, with that. All right, uh, thank you for watching everybody. Next video, we add some um, navigating the history functions. Fun times. See you then. Have a great day. Bye.